Ah, 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 Hey ZB, how's it going there? <coughs> you alright? <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. Good, good. Yeah. Oh, uh, <coughs> a, a visitor? <coughs> Hello. Hello, welcome. Welcome. Uh, this is Workshop 74. My name is uh, Will, and this is ZB, who is my uh, robotic assistant for all things puppetry, aren't you? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a puppetologist. Uh, and that means that what we do here in Workshop 74 is uh, we get sent designs of puppets that have been that have been lost to the sands of time. Mm. We recreate them so we can study them and then repopulate the mm. puppets. Mm. Mm. But uh, oh, it's a bit of a slow day at the minute. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah. Um, and we're just waiting uh, for some new blueprints to be uh, to be sent through by one of our field puppetologists. And um, we thought that in the meantime, we might deal with a bit of a persistent problem that we've got here in the workshop, mm. didn't we? Mm. Well, if you've been here before, you might know that we have a, um, a bit of a stowaway problem, a bit of a... Um, unwelcome guest here in the workshop who can um, cause some problems with our uh, with our work. Yes. Eh? The bin hand. That's right, ZB. The bin hand. Mm. But where did it come from? Where did it come from? Mm. Um, I don't know, but um, it looks like it's put itself together from lots of kind of odds and ends and bits that we didn't use here in the workshop. Um, but, but the important thing is that we finally capture it. Mm -hmm. um, so just bear with us a second and then we'll get you all settled in. I'm going to move that over here and you want to get on the other side of that, okay. <clears throat> I am. I am. Steady. I am. Steady. I am. Slowly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You keep your eye on that. <coughs> okay. I'm gonna have a look in. Okay. After three. Okay. One. Two. Three. Zebi, Zebi. I just uh <laughs> It's fine. It's, it's, nothing. it's not nothing. It's nothing in it. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh just um I couldn't I couldn't resist. You know, it was uh oh God, I got, I got you good. You uh, should have seen your face. You thought you thought it was in there. No, oh, come on, ZB. It was only a joke. ZB. You know like that. All right, I'm sorry. It's not in there. Anyway, I just I just thought you know, funny, slow day, boring. You know. Hello! 
know. It's me, Constance Whippington Smythe, puppetologist number five. And I'm here looking for a mythical puppet, a puppet known as the Margot. Now, no one I've spoken to has even seen one of these creatures. So we don't even know if it exists and if any of our information is even accurate. Here we have it, folks. Unus Praxia. A desert land. A mysterious land. Also, a very moist land. Who knows what mysteries are in the beyond? But it's quite scary, all things told. And that's why people generally stay away from this entire area. So I, Constance Whippington Smythe, will have to go into the wild to find traces of this elusive Margot. And because of the dangers of this treacherous journey, I'm going to keep a diary. So stay tuned for more. This isn't a live link. Mm. This, is a, this is a recording. An old recording, very old. Huh? Field Puppetologist 5, we've got, we've got over 200 now. Mm. What, oh. Mm. Claire, I've been here for two days now and no sightings as of yet. Yes, but I have noticed some odd sounds. Yes, odd sounds in the night. And what's odd about these sounds is that wherever I hear them, they always seem to be coming from behind me. Yes, it must be this strange, strange place. But no concrete sightings as of yet. Pfft, Margot, my derriere indeed. Now take a look at this. Oh, it's the first interesting thing that I've found. Now, according to folklore, Margots like to lay their young in eggs and then they hide them away in places. Hide them away because other margos like to eat the eggs of other margos. Ugh, not a very sensible tactic if you ask me. But that could be why there's not many of them left around. But you know what? This may, may lead to something a little more interesting. Mm. Mm, yes, oh yes, look at this. Oh, it has all the telltale signs of a margo egg one would expect. Yes, look at that slimy membrane emitting a kind of eerie but also elusive green light. Yes, what a perfect example of a Margot egg sac. Uh, uh, there's something outside. Definitely something followed me back from where I was collecting the egg sacs. You see, I found a sample of the egg sacs to make the blueprints from. But now I think Maybe something's looking for them, wants them back, or even wants to eat them. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I have it all packed up here, ready in the delivery room. Keep it safe. So, workshop 74, expect a parcel from me very soon. And just in case, always remember. No, what was that? No! Easy, be. Ooh. Um. Did she say that she was sending that here to us? But, but that is so old. It can't be. I mean, I have never seen that that parcel here. So it's not. It's not here. Is it? <laughs>
To them. <laughs> oh, what's this? It's dragged out of the workshop. Clutter. <laughs> ZB! <laughs> ZB! Look! <laughs> it's the parcel from Constance Wimmington Smythe. Constance Wimmington Smythe? Yes, Constance Wimmington Smythe! Constance Wimmington Smythe! Yes, Constance Wimmington Smythe! Yes, Constance Wimmington Smythe! <laughs> Oh. Right. Mm. Ah. But it's open. Mm. So, let's have a look. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh, the egg. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Oh. It's hideous. Mm. It looks awful. It smells awful. It's mm. sticky. Mm. And it's. Mm. Oh, it's broken. Mm. Ugh. Mm. Oh, it's all broken open. Mm. Oh, well. Mm. Ah. Mm. Blueprints, though. Mm. Here we go. Uh, right, let's open these up, eh? Um. <clears throat> yes. Right. Margot. Uh, Baby Margot. Mm. Um, okay, that's that. And uh, we have, yes, full blueprints. Right, okay, we might as well get cracking. Mm. And make one of these up and uh, you know, see what we are um, dealing with. Mm. Um, okay, I'll get this out of the way. Um, ZB, I need you to check in oop, with the bin hand mm. and just find out what got it so spooked. And uh, everyone at home, you can um, make along with me and we'll get this uh, baby Margot underway. Right, uh, okay, here we go then. Right, okay, we're about ready. So, let's take a look at the blueprints that our field pomatologist sent us. Here we go. Well, hmm? oh, there's something else in here as well. Ooh, there's a picture of it. Um, it's quite uh, interesting. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's got a big head with a, an eye in and then a mouth in the centre with some sort of things and tentacles and, and things like that. Okay, do we have enough to... Yes, I think we're good enough to get started. Um, so, uh, let's get this out of the way. And, uh, right, there we are. Let's get started. Okay, so, we need to build a baby Margot. Uh, so, let's talk materials. What we're going to need is we're going to need a bit of cardboard, probably about this much will do. I've got two just in case I make some hideous mistakes. Uh, we are going to need a little bit of foam. Any foam will do, but this is particularly good. This is foam, soundproofing sort of foam. These wiggly lines might be quite useful. Right. Uh, we're also going to need a stick, but in particular a bamboo stick. And the reason we need a bamboo stick is because you see it's got holes in like that. Because we're also going to need a big chunky nail. The big chunky nail with a big flat bit on the top. Because that will fit into here, like that. You see? So you could find another stick. If you know someone who's got a drill, you can put a hole in, which your nail will go in. Right? Bamboo's a little bit easier though, because it comes with holes in. So, we need that. We need our nail. We're going to need a big bead, like this. This one's made of wood. Um, you can get beads in lots of different places, uh, but what's important is that you get one which has a hole in that your nail will go all the way through. Okay? Super. Need that. Also going to need a little bit of string. I'll tell you what that's for later. And raggedy old t-shirt. Black 
or any darker colours are pretty good. Uh, and this material is quite floaty and floppy, right? So that's an important thing as well. So that's materials, not a lot, okay? That's not decorating, you need all the paints and things like that for that, but that's the making stuff. Let's talk tools. Tools we're going to need is a stapler, normal one. We are going to need pencil or a marker, some way of making some shapes. Uh, we are going to need some way of cutting. Now I'm going to use a knife, right? Because it'll make it a bit faster. But you can use scissors, okay? A little bit safer, right? I'm also going to use, for speed, I'm going to be using a hot glue gun, okay? But any form of like good super glue or a gel super glue, which will hold metal to wood and things like that, that'll work just as well, all right? So let us begin. We're gonna start with the cardboard, okay? Now, we need the head shape of our margot. Now, I've got a little pattern for this. The head shape of my margot is like this. We're gonna need two of them, right? Now, that is super symmetrical, which means it's the same on both sides, okay? And the way that you do that, if you want a bit of a trick, is draw it out, and then if you just have one half, then you can copy both halves. Okay, it's important. You see how cardboard has lines in, these are called corrugations, and we want the lines to run from down this shape, back of the head, front of the head, okay? For that big eye under there, because then it means it'll fold easily this way, right? Where, well, still like that? Yeah, it'll do that easily. Okay, so I am going to draw round my half here. So, I'm going to draw around my half, like that. And then, carefully, I'm going to flip it over. And then draw around it again, like that. And then you'll see we have a nice symmetrical shape. All right? So you're going to need two of those. A top of a head and a bottom of a head. So let me get those drawn out now. And I love the shape of this Margot head. It's like a big axe blade. Whoa, creepy. There we are. Draw around that. And so you can see I've got like two bell shapes there. Okay? Now you can cut these out with scissors. For speed, I'm going to use a knife. If you are using a knife, be very careful. Keep your hands away from that blade, especially if it's a sharp one. All right? And I'm just going to follow this round on the line. Da, 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 da. Now it doesn't need to be perfect, perfect, because we can always trim it down a little bit afterwards if we need to with our scissors. And remember, it's always easier to cut away than to add to. If you cut too much away, well, you can't stick more on, but you can always cut more away. And now I can see my cuts through there. Yes, there we are. And then that, look at this, it pops out pretty clean. Got a little bit of extra on there, bit of tape on the other side. Oh, look at that, it's got one of those. Now, <clears throat> I've got another one that I did earlier, because you know what that's gonna be. Don't need to cut that out twice. So then we've got two shapes that are about the same size, okay? The next thing that we need in cardboard is we need a shoulder plate. So we have to figure out if this is how wide our head is, how big do we want our shoulders to be? Okay, so I'm gonna think, mm, my shoulders are probably gonna be, probably about to here, be about out there like that. You see, I've just made two marks on there to say where they are roughly. And then I'm just gonna draw an oval kind of, like a kind of like a sausage sort of shape. Draw on a sausage. And I'm going to cut that out as well. Pop that out. And then that's kind of it for the cardboard. We might need some later on for some extra decoration. But for our main structure of our baby Margot, that's what we need. So I'm just going to put that out of the way and it's time to move on to the eyeball. Right, so. This is where we need our bead, we need our giant nail, and we need our 
bamboo or stick with hole in. Now I'm going to use my hot glue gun but you can use, if you haven't got one, uh, any form of glue that'll hold these together. So uh, like a su gel super glue that does like metal and wood and stuff like that. It's quite cheap, right? But be careful not to get any on your hands. So, oh, what we're gonna do is we're going to put uh, some of this hot glue into the hole in our bamboo. And then very quickly, before it leaks everywhere, I'm gonna put a little bit more into the top of this uh, eyeball like that and then I'm going to we push this all the way through like that and into the bamboo okay there we are and oh, look at that quick as a flash that is our eyeball looks a bit strange okay so this can get out of the way for now so what we're going to do is this is going to go through our shoulder plate like that and then it's going to go up into here so what i need to do is i'm going to put a tiny hole about here okay you can use scissors for this and i'm just going to make a little and i want it right in the middle i want it off to one side see i've tried to get that quite close to the center we only need it in one side so this will then poke through, there it goes, that pokes through like that, yeah, okay, I should get about that kind of angle, yeah, okay, great, and now we have to put the other on top of this, and this is where those corrugated lines are going to become in handy. We need to get our stapler. Whoa. And we're just gonna go around our edges, not this front edge. I'm gonna put one there and one there, and then I'm gonna do the other side to hold it all in place. Lovely. And then I'm gonna do the back as well. Put one in the back. I'm gonna run them along like train tracks all the way along. Make it nice and sturdy. Okay. So, we've now got kind of head on a stick. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do to give it a bit of expression is, I'm gonna give it a bit of a frown there, like that, like a big eyebrow bit. And the way that I'm gonna do that is, and if you need to move your stick a little bit and like cut a little bit further open, like I think I need to do it that now. So I'm just gonna move this a little bit. I'm gonna open that up a little bit more so I can get my stick a little bit further forward. There, that's better. A little bit more as well. Yeah, it should be coming out about that kind of angle. Is that about right? Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. All right, I'm gonna put a tiny bit more in just to be safe. We go ah lovely and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a blob of glue on the front of here and then i'm going to glue that down so where is my glue gun here it is all right lift that up put our blob of glue on top of this nail mm -hmm. and then push that down to hold that in place angry eye and I'm going to put glue around the bottom of here now as well just to make sure now that I've got this all figured out and it's in the right place and that stick is going nowhere lovely and there we have our kind of head of our margot so that is the head done next section is our shoulder plate I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the head. I'm going to find about the center and I'm going to put a little cross in with my knife. Again, you can do this with scissors. Through there, like that. And I'm going to poke this through. 
So that goes up like that. Now we can start to see the kind of shape there, the head and the shoulders, right? Okay, does that look about right? That looks about right to me, yeah? Okay, I'm gonna take this off now. So what we need now is we need our foam, okay? And I'm gonna cut out a bit of foam, probably about the same shape as this. Um, and I will use my scissors for this because it's easier. And I'm just going to loosely cut that out. Yeah, it doesn't need to be precise. It just needs to be big enough to cover it. There we are. And then I'm going to put a cut in the side of it like this. And that's so when it goes over it, you can still, I, oh, I can see you through there. So you're not getting in the way of that hole, all right? So it's time to glue this in place. Again, you can use any glue. I'm gonna use my glue gun because it's nice and fast. Whoa, on it goes. And then make sure I've got to match that up so I'm not covering over that uh, the stick hole. There we are. And then I'm gonna trim it. Trim it to size. And I'm gonna cut down the edges because this is gonna be the kind of shape of our Margot's shoulders, okay? Get rid of that bit. So we should end up with something that looks kind of like this, okay? And we can see through that hole, all right? Just gonna even that off a little bit. So, <clears throat> That goes through here, like that. And then we need to figure out how high do we want it to be? Like how long do we want the distance between this uh, like sort of neck and the, and the, um, and the shoulders, right? I think that's about right, okay? So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna make a little mark underneath that so I know where it is. We'll come back to that later. Another thing we need to do is we need to add on a little bit of shape under here, okay? Two like kind of like wheel hubs. So I'm just gonna take two little squares of foam and I'm gonna glue them on under there like that and then shape them to size as well. Okay, put a bit of glue on there, put a bit of glue on there and Plonk that on, like that, and plonk that on, like that, and then trim it down, same as the other ones. Okay, so you should have something this kind of shape. All right, and remember, we can still get through there. So. Now we've got our mark on here, so we know where this needs to go up to. We're going to push this all the way up to there, to our mark, and a little bit above it. Push it right the way up, okay? Oh, it's not very comfortable for this little Margot. Right, because what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little bit of string and a little bit of glue, and I'm going to put a tiny dab of glue on my little pencil mark of height. And I'm gonna stick a bit of string in it. In it goes. And then I'm gonna wait for that to dry. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this round on top of itself quite a few times to make a bigger sort of lump. See this? So I've made like a bigger sort of bulge. And you might be thinking, what's that for? tell you. First I'm going to put a little bit of glue on top and I'm going to stick this down as well. There we are. That's now stuck down. That is to stop this coming back and falling off. Yeah? Now that can't come back down. You see? But this is still free to move. Yeah? 
because that's where we're going to be holding it from, back here. Right. Whoa. Starting to come together there now. Final phase, before we get on to all our fun decorating, is going to be raggedy old t-shirt. Ah, you need a sleeve, right? And I'm gonna cut off the sleeve of this t-shirt here. I'm gonna chop this straight off right at the top, like that. So we've got a nice big sleeve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tiny cut in the back here just so I can get through. Has it made the hole? Yes. Tiny hole. Because right, we can always make things bigger, can't make holes smaller. And I'm going to get this stick and I'm going to put that over our hole like this. And then this is going to come all the way up. I'm going to wrap the back of the sleeve around the back of that. And then the front's going to go around the front like this. Around. And you can see that the sort of shape of our margot is starting to come together. See? Look at that shape there. Mm. Now, looking at our margot designs, it says it's got like a big mouth in its middle. It's kind of strange to have your mouth, but I suppose if your head is a giant eyeball, maybe that is what you need. So to do that, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to get it set so I know where the front is. Stay still, you. And then I'm going to just put a little hole in that. And then I'm going to open up that front bit for where we need that mouth to be. Like that. Now, this bit of sleevey, I'm going to cut this off at the bottom. Wow! Get rid of that cuff. Ah. It's nice. Still looks a bit sleevy. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this up a bit raggedy at the bottom. Looks a bit all nasty and raggedy raggedy and it should splay out nicely as well. It should be good. So I'm just going to go around there making these little cuts. Uh-huh. And then, oh, that's already looking better on the bottom there. Right. So, all we need to do now is put in our mouth bits, I think, and get our arm tentacles on. This is where this kind of foam is super handy because it looks a little bit sort of wavy. So I'm gonna say, how long does our arms need to be? Oh, I think our arms need to be about that long. Right. So, I am going to cut a nice big chunk off that. I'm just going to cut like a big oblong. And then I'm going to cut from one thin edge to a thick edge, if that makes sense. So like in a big diagonal down the side. And then that should give us like one tentacle shape and a similar tentacle shape. See? And I'm going to trim this because that doesn't look very tentacly right now. But if I put some angles in here, which kind of match the angles of the um, of the wiggly bits on the front. Oh, starting to look a lot more tentacly now. And I'm going to trim those edges so that they don't look as square. I want square edges on their tentacles. Oh no. Oh no. Make this end a little bit thinner. And that will be, oh, a jolly good tentacle. And then that can glue onto the side there, like that. Super easy. A little bit of that, like there. And, is that right? Is that where I want it? Plonk it on. Nice, that's one. Oh, creepy. That's one tentacle. We'll do the same on the other side. But we need some teeth in this mouth, because it's a little bit, you know, not any teeth in there. Gonna have some struggle, struggle eating. So, 
to make teeth, what we're going to do is we're going to use some cardboard. And uh, we are going to cut like a little sort of a little square out, a little oblong shape, kind of like this. Right. And I'm just going to cut that out. And again, you can use scissors to do this. Don't need to use a knife. Pop that out. And then I'm going to cut it in half. Definitely easier with scissors doing this. And then I'm going to cut little triangles out of it. This is quite delicate. You can see this quite small. Okay, making lots of little small triangles in here. then when I pull these out you're gonna see we've got like lots of teeth on one bit of cardboard and these can be as big or as small as you want there we have a row of teeth yeah once I've got my row of teeth I'm gonna glue them inside this mouth bit okay so I'm just gonna put a line of glue down the back Again, you can use any form of glue to do this. I'm using the hot glue. And I'm just going to stick that just inside that cut that we made. See the teeth there? Now I might have to widen out this mouth a little bit. So I'm going to open it up a little bit, cut like a square out, rather than just a hole. Because I need to fit another set of teeth in now. There we are. You see we've got one set of teeth coming. And then we're going to put another set of teeth in there as well. Super. But once we've done that and got our teeth in and got our tentacles on, it's time to start painting and decorating up. It's going to be quite cute, really, isn't it? Uh, let's see what it says in the, uh, in the blueprints here. <coughs> so, uh, yes. Uh, the baby margors are quite safe, uh, but once they mature, they are apparently quite dangerous. But this takes many, many years. Um, the live margor egg that I am dispatching to you should reach you much, much sooner than that. And a live egg? So where's the other one? How long has it been here? Maturing. Oh, <laughs> 
a little baby Margot after he's all been decorated and done. So I put some more tentacles on, had lots of different tentacles, uh, and I put a bit of glue on them uh, to give them that lovely tentacle sort of uh, end point. I painted the head up as well. You could probably paper a mache of that because you can still you can still see the staples in there, can't you? Yes, you can still see them. Um, we've got our teeth in and some, ugh, some sort of tentacly things in there as well and um, a little bit of paint on here and uh, obviously did the eyeball and I managed to get in there and get the uh, black painted oh I'm sorry uh, painted in there and uh, yes yeah, so that's our that's our little baby Margot and uh, not not so cute anymore particularly uh, um, I wonder how big you get uh, when you're all finished I hope it's not too big because uh, Oh yes, I'm not sure how we could cope with a big one of these, eh? Could we? But um, yeah, so a little bit of paint, uh, a little bit of tentacles, uh, and uh, just some string in there for that. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a little baby Margot done. <laughs> You're here! I, look! I finished! It's a real little cutie. I don't know what Constance Whippington Smythe was talking about. You're a little darling, aren't you? Yes, you're very cute. Hey, um, give me something to wrap it in. I want to make sure it's warm.
Bean hand! Bean hand! Not while they call me a popatologist. Fetch my tools, ZB. Come on, don't die on me. Come on now. Thank you, Doctor. How's he getting on, ZB? Oh. <sighs> Looks like they're going to be okay. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. What a mess it is in here. Mm -hmm. And I lost that little baby Margot as well. Mm. What? Oh, don't, don't worry. <laughs> they take a um, they take a long time to mature. Uh, that big one was oh I don't know like forty years old mm. or something. So we've got a lot of time to to find it. What? And if we don't? If we can't find it, we... Well, we could just burn this place down. I mean, it's pretty ruined now anyway. Well, we'll, we'll just have to be, uh, yeah, Workshop 75, I guess. Oh, uh, right then. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a bit hasty. Um, well, we need to get ready for puppet school first. Mm. And then... Mm. Oh, my God. Mm. Are you still here? Um, well, that, uh, that was not a normal day. It's not usually like this uh, in the workshop, in puppet school. In fact, in fact, I think, I think today's been, been a first. Um, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Will. <clears throat> now, if you're not now scarred for life, uh, and want to learn more about building and performing with puppets, you're in luck because you can sign up for our second term of Puppet School, which starts on September the 25th, 2021. <clears throat> Budding puppetologists aged 7 to 11 and 12 to 16 will be able to take part in a 10 week course every Saturday at Riverside Community Health Project, Newcastle. There is also a course for adults on a Monday night. <clears throat> if you do sign up, you'll get one of these rather lovely theatre boxes and a materials pack with lots of interesting things in. If you want to learn more about Puppet School, you can find out on our website here. Isn't that right, ZB? Oh. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> and until then, I'm just going to sit here and rest a while. Mm -hmm. So, see you there. Bye. Bye. worked out all right in the end, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I thought so. Oh, I like your bandana, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Oh.